بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Living the Quran through the Living Quran, an audio visual translation of Tafsir al Nur of Sheikh Mohsen Karaati, translated by Salim Bimji and edited by Arif Huda. Audio version read out by the translator. In this 22 part series, we will be reviewing Chapter 58 of the Noble Quran, Surah Al Mujadila, The Pleading Woman. Make space. O you who believe, when you are told, make room in the assemblies for one another and for newcomers, do make room. Allah will make room for you in His grace and paradise. And when you are told, rise up and leave the assembly, then do rise up. Allah will raise in degree those of you who truly believe and act accordingly, and in degrees those who have been granted the knowledge, especially of religious matters. Surely Allah is fully aware of all that you do. Thinking points. The word tafassaha means to expand something and to make room. And the word unshuzu means to stand up from one's place out of respect for someone else. Now in the previous verse, verse number 10, the basis for grief and heartache was expressed as a secretive consultations. However, in this verse under view, verse number 11, the source of delight and love is expressed as making room for others in gatherings. Now, there are a few groups who have been granted a specific status in the Qur'an by Allah. The Prophets, those who struggle in the way of Allah, the Mujahideen, those who perform the Salat, the people who give in charity, the true believers who perform righteous actions, and last but not least, the religious scholars. It's possible that the portion of the verse which reads, Allah will raise in degree those of you who truly believe and act accordingly, and in degrees those who have been granted the knowledge, especially of religious matters, this, that, that this may be a sign that the order to stand up may be due to the entrance of believers and scholars into a gathering, meaning that out of respect of such individuals, we need to stand up for them. There's a story which has been related by the late Sheikh al Tabrisi in his book al ihtijaj in which he relates that during the time of the 10th Imam, Muhammad ibn Ali al-Hadi, a Shi jurist who was engaged in discussions with one of the deviant enemies of the Ahlul Bayt, a person which is known as a Nasibi, that he was able to clear up many of the misconceptions this man had. And the Shi scholar was able to prove the truthfulness of his stance and that of the followers of the Ahlul Bayt. In that assembly in which Imam al-Hadi was present, the scholar entered into the gathering. In addition to the Imam, there were also other members of the family of Ali and the Banu Hashim also present. Imam al-Hadi directed the Shi'i jurist to take a seat in the best place in that gathering. And when the members of the family of Ali and the Banu Hashim saw the level of respect with which this jurist was receiving from Imam al-Hadi, they actually became upset. The elders of this group complained to the 10th Imam as to why he gave this man such prominence and respect, to which the Imam replied, Will you be content if I provide you my rationale via the Qur'an? Those present voiced their confirmation. At this point, Imam al-Hadi read the verse of the Qur'an under review and went on to say that the value of this person was due to his religious discussions and the fact that he was able to defeat the Nasibi through his intellectual proofs which is better than any familial and ancestral ties and worth. Yes indeed, the believing scholar has a greater status over an average believer, just as the average believer has a greater status than a non-believer. Now in another place in the Quran, in chapter number 39, Surah Al-Zumar, verse number 9, Allah says, Is he who worships Allah devoutly in the hours of the night, prostrating and standing, who fears the hereafter and hopes for the mercy of his Lord, to be likened to that other? Say, are they ever equal, those who know and those who do not know? Only the people of discernment would reflect on the distinction between knowledge and ignorance, and obedience and disobedience to Allah, and be mindful. Takeaway Messages 1. Faith has conditions and requirements which must be observed. 2. Respecting newcomers is a valued mannerism in Islamic ethics. 3. It is necessary to make room for others in any gathering.
4. Following the commands of Allah is the ground for receiving more rewards from Him. 5. Making room, metaphorically speaking, when it comes to other people will cause the opening of Allah in our actions, as the reward of Allah is commensurate to the action performed. 6. Observing social etiquette, even when it comes to something like sitting and standing, is recommended in Islam. 7. Sometimes it is necessary to tell the people in the gathering who are sitting down that they must stand up in respect of those elders and scholars who are entering the assembly. 8. Knowledge is a divine gift and grace. 9. Those who hold knowledge must also be given a high status in the Muslim society. 10. The actions of a scholar have a greater reward than the same action done by a non-scholar. 11. Giving a place to and standing in respect of someone must be done out of sincerity and for the sake of Allah and not for any personal motives. 12. Even when it comes to mundane actions like sitting and standing, we must never forget Allah when performing them. We will continue in our next session to review verse number 12.